welcome back to the channel. We are here once again with my 1995 Ford Escort wagon, also known as the Sippy Cup. If you just joined us now, there's a playlist for this car that you can go check out right up here and down in the description. You can see all the videos I've made about it. And good God, there's gonna be a lot of them now. But what we're here to do today is see if we can invent an easy way to change the transmission fluid in this car. When I say invent, I don't know I'm the first guy to do this, but I'm the first guy that I know of to try it this way. The big problem with these cars is they don't give you a fill port for the transmission. And I should add, this is a manual transmission car. Automatic transmissions, I don't know anything about. So this is a different thing. On this car, the fill port is the vehicle speed sensor which is buried down on the transmission somewhere around down there. And it isn't impossible to get on, but it isn't good either. But the big problem with it is that it's held into the transmission with one 10 millimeter head bolt. So that's like a M6 or M8 thread, probably an M6. And if the car is older than about 12 seconds old, that will break off when you drill go to try and take it out. The next problem you're gonna have is when you try and pull the VSS to actually put oil in it, you're gonna break the VSS in half. And then the third problem you're gonna have is the half that's broken in the transmission could fall into the transmission. So you just have a whole world of problems there that you don't need to deal with and you shouldn't. From my combined participation in the ownership experience of three of these different cars, I can tell you that the way most people do it is that they don't. Every one of these I've ever had, this being the third one, putting my grubby mitts on it anyway, I'm confident I'm the first person to dump the transmission oil out of it. So the way I've been doing them is I would drop the oil out of them, which is just a traditional drain plug. There's nothing elaborate about it. And then I would pull an axle shaft to fill them back up. Also, when I buy these cars, they're so old that the boots on the half shafts are all rotted and the half shafts need replaced anyway. At least the boots do. So you got to pull the axles out anyway. And if you jack the car up far enough, you can just fill it with oil through the axle hole up to the specified quantity called for in the service manual, then put the axle back in, let the car down, and everything's good. Well, I would like to try and do something else because I would like to do possibly more frequent fluid changes. What I would really like to do is one fluid change on it to act as a flush, dump that, and then put good fluid back in it later. So I've got some Redline MTL that I'd like to put in it just to keep it shifting nice because uh, the transmission in this car dying will be the death of it. There's no possible way that the cross member that holds it in, which is right down here on the frame, is ever going to come out. It's hopelessly rusted in place. Uh, a clutch problem or a transmission problem is a permanent death sentence for this thing. So we want to try and keep it happy. So what we're going to try and do is fill it up through the outdoor. So I'm hoping it just feels dirty the first time we try it and then it becomes more comfortable later. But the plan here is this is an Escort transmission drain plug. It is a spare that I kept off the first one of these cars that came home when it went to the junkyard. I have actually had this plan in the works for like five years now. And the plan here is we're going to take this 1 8 NPT pipe plug tap and drill kit, drill a hole in the top of it. I have some 8 inch NPT stopper plugs that we can put in it and some 8 NPT hose nipples that we can use for filling with my pressure gun. It's a power brake bleeder that you just pump up and it'll push fluid. So we are just going to use that to slip a hose on this guy with that guy in there like so, fill the transmission up, take this guy out and put the plug in this guy. Now I've already seen people do this with like a big rubber plug and then they try and change it real fast between like the big rubber plug and this big thing. This is an M18 plug. And from what I can tell, by the way, this isn't a pipe thread or anything. It's just straight M18 thread if you want to do your own thing. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it's metric, but don't quote me for sure, like 99.9% .9 sure. But the problem I would see with that is by the time you get those things swapped out, you know, you're losing God only knows how much fluid. And it just sounds like kind of a nightmare to deal with to me. Plus, I want something that's just a little more repeatable and a little less hassle, so I'm more inclined to do it more frequently. And you may be thinking, hey, you're still going to lose a ton of fluid when you take a plug out that's this big and just let it straight dump. Well, I'm not planning to do that. What I'm hoping to do is just drill down the thickness of the hex here, or, or preferably even a little less. We'll have to see how actually tapping it goes. And then on the other side, I'm just gonna use, I think probably a 3 16 bit to do a through hole in it. So the through hole in the thing is actually not gonna be much bigger than the interior hole of this nipple. And it'll take forever to fill up, but I really don't care. I can plug the hose in, plug my pressure pot into it, pump it up, stick it on the car and walk away until it's empty. And then when everything's said and done, I will change this out with one of these guys, and it'll only be leaking through a 3 16 hole while I'm trying to do that. So it shouldn't hardly lose any fluid at all, I hope. So that's the plan anyway. Let's get started to commence to making it happen. So the first problem I'm gonna have is I need to make sure that my hole is actually straight through this thing and I don't want it all whopper jawed in any which way. What I should have to do this, and we're set up in my drill press here, are what are called machinist parallels, which are 
what they sound like, they're just parallel bars that you can put in your vise under stuff like this to prop it up and hold it securely and keep it flat. I do have some parallels somewhere, but I haven't seen them in years. So uh, this is the part where we just wing it and hope for the best. And I've got it looking pretty good. Just gonna continue to eyeball it up and tap a it as I see fit. That actually looks pretty good. So you might imagine the next issue is going to be making sure that doesn't walk. And I'm not gutsy enough to center punch it because I don't want to drive it through the vise. What I am going to do is use a center drill to get a nice little pilot started on it, I hope. And also, this vise is an XY, so I can adjust it and just kind of eyeball things up because that's uh, the best I'm going to be able to do with the tools I have. Okay, so I can see it needs to go toward you a little. Pretty good. It definitely needs to go that way a touch. It's probably as good as we're going to hope for. So I'm going to lock the ways of this vise down. If you're curious, this is just a Harbor Freight vise. There's nothing special about it. And we're just going to try and get a little pilot divot started. Whoa, that's that's really wrong. Let's let's do this all over again the right way. Oops. Paying attention is hard. Let's try that again with a little less stupidity. Boy, it's still got a ton of walk in it. You can see it needs to come toward you now that it's spinning or it's too near you. So it's just walking around to beat the band. Well, it's what it is. I don't think that's even close to center. I doubt I can fix it, but we'll try. It's too far. It's actually the check of my drill press that's bobbing. This isn't the greatest drill press. I'm confident that's the best I can do. And I tried. The penalty for failure here isn't that high. So we just fill it up like we always have. All right, this is actually an eighth inch bit for the eighth inch NPT nipple, but I have selected it because it just fits inside this hole. This is also one of the cheapest drill bit bits known to man. Doubt this is gonna work very well, but we'll see. Much better than expected, really. Yep, we're there. All right, take her out of there and see how he did. About as good as you'd expect from a hobbyist that doesn't really know what he's doing or have the right tools. It's okay. Which is another reason why I didn't want to get super aggressive and try and run that pipe tap all the way through. So here's the pilot, there's the hat. It wouldn't leave much meat left there, especially since I've got it farther out of whack than I'd really hoped. We want to be pretty careful. I don't want to drill down very deep with it at all. Can't believe my five cent drill bit there did okay. I have to drop the table some. I think that's about as well centered as up as I'm gonna get. And I'm just gonna try and take it pretty easy on depth and we'll see what happens. Actually pretty close on centered. Well, as to my other hole anyway. Okay. This is as far as I dare risk until I know I have to do something else. So now let's try and get some pipe thread in that thing. I think there you'll be able to see we did not go very deep at all. And that was by design. It will be interesting to see if I can get enough thread in it for this to be worthwhile. I don't know, because I don't think the threads on the tap even start until deeper than that. And you can see we're about that deep before we even start thread. Really, I only need a couple threads in it. I mean, we'll try it. Because, yeah, I just need a couple threads. It's not like there's any pressure in there. My tap handle, some rapid tap. 
think I'm going to put some paper towels on the floor so I don't make a big oil mess. I've got moderate hope for this whole plan. This is actually going okay. Okay, I think I'm bottomed out. Let's get her winged on out of there. By the way, I'm pretty pleased with the quality of this tap kit. I bought the drill and the tap as one thing uh, from Amazon. They're Drill America, which I've never paid any attention to before. They both seem really sharp. And as you can see, I'm a pro-level machinist here, so as often as I'm gonna use this stuff, it is gonna be nice to have around. I don't know how well you'll see it, but there's a couple threads in it, which if stuff threads into it, that's all I need. There, I think you can see there's just a few threads in it. Just what we need. Let's see if our nipel goes in. <laughs> Barely. It would probably help if I took a countersink bit and cleaned that up a little. And I might. Yeah, it gets about right there and wants to stop. What I'm gonna do is take one of these pipe plugs with a little bit of oil on it and kind of use it as a as a bottom tap. I don't, you know, there's no such thing as an NPT bottom tap, I don't think, because it's tapered. Anyway, so I'm basically going to use this guy to try and clean up the thread or maybe cut one or two more. It just occurred to me that I'm putting a piece of English hardware on my, as far as I know, entirely metric car until I tried to find a wrench to put on the top of this thing. And of course, this 1 8 NPT pipe fitting, it's got a 10 millimeter head. Made in China, indeed. That's about all the more she wants to finger tight. That's about all the more she wants to tight at all. But really, that's, that's a couple threads, a couple turns. By the way, I'm always amazed at the power to make threads. It's one of the most powerful tools that humanity has ever come up with. An inclined plane on a screw that you can exert thousands of tons of force with, and I can just do it whenever I want. Not that I'm good at it, but it's just cool. Now that it's installed, if I didn't tell you how off-center that was, you probably wouldn't notice. Let's try our nipel. It doesn't want to go not 10 millimeter. Oh, this is, that's going to be super annoying in the future. So just a note for me to make sure I just, you know, take all the wrenches with me. And these are brass, so they will forgive a little bit, but I kind of don't want that. Mm. It's in there. It's even remotely straight. That really shows how off-axis it is, so you can... I've got it perfectly lined up for you to see it. Whatever. It's got a hole in it the whole way through, and that's all we really needed. We'll find out if this is going to work in the long run, but I think it will. One of my biggest fears with doing something like this, and one of the reasons I didn't do it before, is something could fall out and then just leak all the oil out and I wouldn't know. The more I thought about it, that's kind of true of the big plug too. It's kind of true of about 100 bolts on the car already. And when have you ever had this stuff, you know, accidentally fall out? Usually this stuff's so tight you can't get it out. So I think what's going to happen is that guy is probably going to be just fine. And I did think about doing something cute with like a 90 and a valve and all that crap. But the problem is this is basically the lowest point of the car and I didn't want anything really hanging down that would get knocked off. I can pretty much live with that three-eighths of an inch or whatever it's sticking down, but anything more than that, I couldn't. Plus a valve, that could come open and cause problems. Plus, when am I ever going to come out to the car and not notice, you know, the enormous transmission leak? It'd have to come out going down the road. And I'm fixing a problem that Mazda Ford created here anyway, so don't blame me. But that's what we're going to do, I think. I think she's going to be all right. So as a trial run for this thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this in the transmission. I've still got one half shaft axle to do. So I'm going to put this guy in there, pull that half shaft, jack the car up so it won't leak fluid out. And I'm going to use this guy to fill it up from the bottom. And then we'll just leave the car set for a day or so with the axle shaft out. And we'll see if it's going to leak all over the place. And if it seems good, we'll throw the axle in it and we'll say this is going to be our drain and fill from now on. So of course to drain, we would just remove the whole thing and just let it eat. And then to fill, this would be our port. And I'm reasonably pleased with how it came out. Could be better. Could have been way worse. The next thing will be to see if this is the same as the, if 95, 93 use the same plug. 
Because if they don't, I'll be really pissed. So I got all my ducks in a row with all the adapters and fittings and stuff I need to actually give this a shot. Got my power bleeder, which is just my, my fluid pump. Some cheap ATF. Not the cheapest, but I mm. also decided to get an M18 drain plug just to make sure that that is the thread size. They look the same, but I'll check it while I'm under there. And what I've decided to do is just dump the transmission with one of the old half shafts still in it. And I'll pump a quart into it. And then I'll try to do the old quick changer on this stuff and then leave it sit for a couple days and see if it's just a heinous leak. I've got a couple thoughts of things I can do to hopefully make this seal better if that happens, but eh, it won't be any guarantees until we know if it's even an issue. Kind of suspect it will be, but we'll try and see. And that right there is a pretty accurate depiction of the color of the fluid that came out of the thing. Just many shades dark for ATF in a manual transmission. Just no good. I think we got her about as drained as I'm going to get her, so let's get under there and plug all this crap in and see how it goes. And she's still dripping just a touch, but we really don't care about that because I don't think it's going to go my way in the first try. And if it does, I still want to put better fluid in it in a, you know, a couple more months anyway and just let this act as a flush. This is the new M18 plug. I'm just gonna try it and see if these, yeah, you know, see if this plug fits. Well, I'm feeling promising so far. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Yep, she's good. So if you wanna try this on yours and you wanna try it with a, diff, with a spare plug like I did, but you don't have another escort to steal it out of, there you go, link in the description. Let's get our modded guy in here. And I am just reusing the original copper crush washer because the replacements I have seem to be like really hard copper for some reason. I'm not sure what's up with that, but I don't like it. I've reused them before and gotten away with it. So hopefully today will be one of those days. And this is 23 millimeter, by the way. Like the weirdest size on the planet. And I definitely don't want to strip the transmission case with this enormous wrench. There. That felt like a lot. So the move now is to just get my hose put on. And it fits this, these nipples really tight. I uh, pretty much expect to have to cut this off. And also having my hands covered in ATF to do this isn't working out that great. <laughs> Probably gonna need a rag. Now this is actually the, the line this nipple calls for. This is 3 16 line. It fits really well. What I may do on the next round of this is try some quarter inch. It should be a little bit more sloppy, but it might be a little easier to work with in the long run. I also wanted to put my wrench on that before I did this. I wanted to put the box end on it because I'm gonna have to take that out but oops so when the time comes we'll just have to use the open end the next phase here shouldn't be all that exciting in fact it should be hopefully not very dramatic at all if this works I apologize for that being a blue hose so you can't really see what's going on but I've got about 20 psi pumped up in my fluid pump here and I've got a quarter ATF in it I've modified this pump with a ball valve to shut it off so I'm just gonna open it and hopefully oil just starts pumping up there. And this does take forever. But I saw it go up there. I don't know if you could see the color of that tube change or not, but I could. Pressure is certainly dropping, but it doesn't really seem to affect speed all that much. It just kind of takes forever anyway. But so far, so good. I've got a ton of hose on this thing so I can pull it out from under the car and pump it up again. And I may do that. And we'll catch back up once it's all full and it's time to swap fittings. To my surprise, that only took about a minute. Maybe two. Now we're ready for the old swap a rally. It's basically finger tight and it's the hose holding it up. I'm also doing this completely uh, the wrong way. I'm like packed like sardines in a can here and I can't get two hands at this. Story of my life, right? So I'm gonna try and put like some pre twist in my hose. Okay, so we're losing a little bit. Oops. Which is to be expected. Right. Got my plug started. As far as fluid loss, that wasn't bad at all. Get me plug in it. And then to make sure I don't strip my transmission case, I'm gonna hold that guy still while I tighten the inner plug. And this one I'm not really that afraid of putting some beef to because I got two spares. <clears throat> okay, that's pretty freaking tight. I'm gonna get some brake clean up in here, try and get all the residual oil that's dripping off of stuff out of here. And then we will probably put some clean paper towels under it and monitor it for a day or two and see if she's gonna be a, a leaker. I've got mixed hopes. So we got our first quart all keystered up in there, got it all cleaned up, and I've got a fresh paper towel sitting on a fresh sheet of cardboard suspended atop that Coke can there, just so we don't get any contamination from the floor. Uh, truth be told, I already expected to see it leaking at this point, and it's been about five minutes, and it isn't, so that's cool. So we will monitor this situation over the next day or two, and hopefully it just works out and fill it all the way up and be done with this. So since that went pretty much fine, I've got the rest of it loaded up, and we'll just 
enema, the rest of it on in there. The internet being the internet, I've seen conflicting reports for how much fluid this transmission takes. The Shilton book calls for 5.7 pints, which is, or something like that, which is just shy of three quarts. So I've already got one quart in it. I've got two more in there. I'm just gonna pump in however much it'll take and we're gonna call it good. And then uh, probably a few months from now, I will dump this and probably put Redline in it anyway. And it has been like two weeks since I've touched this and there's just a little drop starting to form. I haven't noticed any uh, sitting around where it's parked or anything, but I also noticed like some sort of oil dripping off the exhaust. So I don't know, that might not even be out of the plug. I'm gonna assume it is. A couple drops a month is a leak rate in which I can deal with. If at some point it becomes more severe than that, then we'll worry about it then. I do have a couple of ideas. In fact, next time I drop it, I, I intended to do it this time, but since I don't know the whole history of the car, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. But the next time I drop the oil, I'll actually measure how much comes out. So then we will know if there's an issue. My next trick here is going to be kind of fun. So I want to take that plug out, put my nipple on a hose back on, and not lose much fluid in the process. And I fully expect this to not be that easy to do. Now there are two things that are going to happen that are going to be against all odds, kind of. First one is going to be getting that plug swapped back for the nipple without making a giant mess. And the second one is going to be recording it in a way in which you can see it happen. Try and get my hose contraption combobulated. Okay, that feels pretty free. Pretty finger tightish. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, monumental mess. <laughs> yeah, highly not suggested to start and stop. Yeah, you guys are probably just not gonna be able to get a view. Now this is covered in ATF, which makes it really easy to work with. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I have four quarts of ATF, or I bought four quarts for this. I'm just gonna drain the quart that we pumped in it out. I know it seems like a little bit of a waste, but the car has had a chance to move a few times with just that quart in it. So it's moved around and sloshed a little bit. So I'll justify it in the, the name of a flush. I'm just gonna make a monumental mess. It's gonna result in dumping all the oil anyway. So we may as well just let it happen. So while I was draining, I did decide to make one change to this thing. I did step up to the quarter inch hose that we discussed before. These are four 3 16 hose and a 3 16 fits it properly and everything. Problem is it fits it so properly that you can't spin these inside the hose, which now with quarter inch, I very easily can. I've just got a couple of zip ties, one on each end acting as a hose clamp. So I don't actually want it tight because then I wouldn't be able to screw it in. So the goal here is just to make that a little bit easier on myself. And hopefully these are good for, I don't know, 510 PSI, something, whatever the fluid pump needs to push fluid. So we're gonna find out. This could be genius or tragic, like almost everything on the channel. So after our tactical retreat from a few moments ago, let's see how this works out. I'm betting better, except I forgot the freaking wrench, didn't I? Yes, yes I did. And this is so slippery already, I can't grip it even with a gloved hand. Awesome, pretty sure that's immediately cross-threaded. Yeah, this isn't working out real well. The ATF just makes everything so slick. I don't think that is cross-threaded. I think it is just that tight, although I'm not real sure. Let's see if fluid goes everywhere. Gotta tell you, it didn't feel great. I'm gonna watch this 100% fail now that I've got the both half shafts in it. There she goes. And I see that it is gonna leak a little around the fitting, meaning around the hose, but not enough to matter. So now the move is to wait for this guy to become empty, put another cord in it, and shoot it back in there. The good news is that putting another cord in won't be a big deal because we'll be disconnecting it up here at the lid. We'll just unscrew it and relieve the pressure, drop it in. So we won't have to do anything at the transmission until this is uh, done, until it's all the way full. So right around two and three quarters quarts, it just started pouring out of the axle seal hole on the driver's side. Now, full disclosure, I've got the spindle and hub off that right now. It's down at the shop getting a bearing pressed in. So I'm hoping this is just a little loose, not seated all the way on the seal. If that seal's trash, I'm screwed. I'm gonna get a block of wood and some hammer and try and see if that'll go in a little bit more. So as I'd hoped, that axle was just kicked out about three quarters of an inch. Good news and bad news on that is that you don't wanna do that because when the axle sits there and rests on the seal, you have the potential to damage the seal. You really want it supported by the differential in the transmission. And it's been sitting like that for two or three days, I guess, which sucks but the good news is once i shoved her back in there it appears to have quit leaking i sprayed off everything with brake clean quick and we should actually be right around at capacity right now but i kind of have no choice but to keep filling uh, one because i don't know how much it leaked and two because i don't know if it's going to continue to leak so if i have to replace that axle seal 
it's just not going to be a good time. Also, the other end of my contraption here is leaking pretty nicely. I don't think switching over to quarter inch line was the move. Yeah, you know, I say that, but I also haven't put the plug back in it yet. So maybe this is a winner. And considering I'm going to have to do this like two more times ever, it's probably going to be just fine. So she's been taking fluid again for a little bit now and nothing is pouring out. As soon as I say that, you see that little drip of brake clean off the back, but it was just brake clean, I promise. While that's finishing up, I'm going to put the under engine plastics back on this thing, which it hasn't seen in four years. So it might look a little different when you come back. So that appears to be all she's going to take. And I can see the, you know, the larger plug and I can see I'm not turning it. Just FYI, if you're curious. All right, I have to convince myself it's okay to lose a little because it genuinely is plenty in there. Okay, so that actually went surprisingly well. I probably will hose this down again with brake clean when I get done so I can monitor for actual leaks versus prior leaks. I have to pay attention to that half shaft until I go get the hub assembly back. That will be a separate video, by the way. You will be able to find in the Escort playlist. Okay, that's all the tighter I dare get it. And I've decided I'm going to use whatever quantity of brake clean I have left under here, which doesn't feel like a ton. And that is going to be all she wrote for that. And you may be wondering how it worked out. And the answer to that is that really was that. For reasons almost beyond my comprehension, I've only had to drive about 1500 miles in the last year. So I have not yet revisited this topic to put the Redline MTL oil in it because 1500 miles is pretty much in my mind what the flush interval would be. So I'm only just now getting to the point where I'm ready to do that, but that car hasn't leaked one drop of anything in the last year. So my little quick swap drain plug system System there is working just great. Uh, lesson learned there was that once you start pumping fluid into it, don't stop. The change from the little drain plug to the nipple is almost impossible to make because everything's all covered in oil and slippery and it's it's just not easy to do. But the change out from nothing there because you just drained the transmission fluid to put the nipple in it pump it up and then drop the nipple and put the little drain plug in it is really not that difficult because there's no hose in the way and the drain plug really shouldn't be all that oily because you know it's just a drain plug you should add it off the side but anyway i'm pretty happy with how this turned out it is definitely a weird solution to a problem that really should not exist it's probably going to be a niche thing that is really only ever really relevant to this car or you know escorts in general with you know manual transmissions but it was kind of a fun thing to do and i've had this one on my mind for like 10 years since I originally figured out that you can't really change the oil on a manual transmission escort. So it was fun to finally get it in practice, even though it was kind of frustrating learning the actual process once I did. But speaking of fun, hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's all I've got for this one, and we will catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.